What's up guys, Games of Dad here. Thanks for dropping by the channel. Today we have a game hunt for you. Now this game hunt takes place at a new store. Well, it's not really new. It's been it's been open for a year. Um, but obviously with lockdown and stuff like that, I think the uh, the owner James said that he hasn't been able to trade pretty much for like seven months of his first year of opening, which is absolutely crazy for a new business. But I found out about this store through an article in the newspaper. My partner picked it up uh, and she showed me this and I was like, we need to go down and check this out because there are not many shops like this in the area which I live in Doncaster. Um, so yeah, so basically guys, we're gonna head on down. I'm gonna show you the store, see what you think, and then I'm going to show you what I picked up from the store when we come back here into the games room. So if you're ready, then I'm ready. Let's get into it. So this is it guys, Doorway to Darkness. Please make sure you head over to their Facebook page and check them out. The store is set in a little market town called Collinsborough. And as I was walking up to it, I was super excited. So listen, sit back, relax and enjoy the show guys. You will not be disappointed. One thing which was immediately apparent when you walk into this store is just how organized and clean everything is. Everything looks super tidy, everything looks super clean and absolutely well taken care of. Uh, the store itself is an absolute credit to its owner. Oh my gosh, Castlevania, PS1, I'd love to have this game, but it is far too out of my price range. I had to go and check out Skies of Arcadia, guys, uh, but it didn't have any manuals with it, so I thought I'd leave that one for today. And then I spied Gumbird 2 as well, which is on my radar, uh, but for today, I thought I'd leave it alone. Another game I'd love to have on the Mega Drive, Dracula, but again, unfortunately it was incomplete. I'll keep searching for that one.
Who would have thought that all those years back when Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door came out on the GameCube, that it would command a price of 130 in this day and age? Insane. Even Commodore 64 games, the very first computer I ever had, oh my god, the nostalgia. And if you're missing any consoles, guys, look, at there is loads of them here. Get yourself down to Doorway to Darkness and grab yourself that console you're missing. And it's not just about the video games either, guys. There are lots and lots of vintage action figures and toys in this store. And lots of board games. There is a lot going on. It is absolutely jam-packed. There's also a really nice selection of collector's editions across various consoles. There really is something for everyone here. So welcome back guys, what did you think of that? Doorway to Darkness, finally a retro store, very close to where I live. I'm gonna be spending a lot of time there as I build my collection, no doubt. James is gonna be seeing a lot of me. Um, I just wanna say a massive shout out to James as well for allowing me to film in the store today. That was absolutely fantastic, I really do appreciate that. And what a genuinely nice guy he is as well. He's very knowledgeable, very welcoming. So guys, if you're looking for a new retro store uh, and you fancy, well, well, to be honest, wherever you are, if you fancy traveling, if you're close by, make sure you check it out. Uh, go over to the Facebook page, there's a lot of information he posts on there regularly. He has an Instagram account as well, and I will link them in the description below as well. So make sure you go and check James at Doorway to Darkness out. Now, as I promised, I did pick up a few bits and pieces. Nothing special, but we're going to go through those right now, and I'm going to show you what I picked up on my day out at Doorway to Darkness. So the first game which I picked up today from Doorway to Darkness is a Sega Master System, and for you guys which don't know, the Sega Master System was the very first console I owned. It was like my first leap into the console era, um, and it holds a lot of nostalgia for me. So the first game I picked up today was um, Afterburner by Sega on the Sega Master System, an absolute arcade classic. I loved playing this. I think I played it on the Commodore 64, and um, basically as soon as I got my Master System, I was on this. Uh, straight away. Uh, unfortunately, I never kept my original copy, so I've been looking for it, and this only costs £3. Now, it's not complete. It does have uh, a missing manual, but I'm sure I'll be able to pick one of those up in due course. I'm pretty good at dropping on manuals, um, but yeah, for £3, I wasn't going to pass this up, and it is in really good condition. The box is, is really good, um, and if I just open that up real quick, there you go, there's the cart, and it does have the catalogue as well, which are, you know, I don't know, few or far between, you don't always see those. So it was it was nice to have that in uh, the box as well. So that was Afterburner on the Sega Mass system. So that leads us on to some Sega Mega Drive games, which I got today. And the first one uh, is one which I, again, I had when I was uh, little and uh, I used to play it all the time. And that was Jurassic Park. And this game, uh, again, holds a lot of nostalgia for me because I actually got this when Jurassic Park came out. It was back in like 93, I think it was, 93, 94 time um, and because there was like this big Hollywood blockbuster movie and stuff like that you know being able to play that on your Sega Mega Drive it was it was really good and it was a super fun platforming game as well like it is really really quite a kids one player game on the Mega Drive so um, the condition of this game absolutely fantastic as you can see this one's in a plastic cellophane wrapper which most of the games are uh, and it does come with a sticker as well and it tells you whether the game is complete or incomplete which is super helpful when you're scanning through the games as well um so yeah so basically let me just really quickly open this up uh, as you can see hanging tab box really really good condition uh, and inside as well uh, we have oh, the manual and the cartridge uh, and everything is looking 
really good. So do you know what? Really, really happy uh, with Jurassic Park on the Mega Drive there. So I tend to buy games which I want to play or games which I used to have um, when I was smaller. So for instance, I don't generally, I don't collect games to have them on the shelf. I know a lot of people do and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, but for me, all the games in my collection are games which I've either played, I want to play, or are games which hold some sort of nostalgia for me. Now, in the case of some games, um, it kind of breaks the mold in as much that I like to get the series. So if there's like a number one and number two and number three, then I will endeavor to get those so that I complete that little set. And in the case of this one, I have the original, I played the original, I never played this. Um, I will give this a go for sure, absolutely. Um, but I picked it up, it was nice and cheap, it wasn't expensive, um, but it just completes that Mega Drive series. And this is Echo the Dolphin, and this is the Tides of Time. Um, so obviously the original Echo the Dolphin when it came out, it looked amazing, everyone was jumping on it, it actually really wasn't that great a game to be honest. Uh, I don't think I ever completed Echo the Dolphin, it was just super difficult. Um, I didn't really know what the heck I was doing half the time. Um, but you know, I saw this in James's store uh, and it is in absolutely crazily good condition. It is like, the thing is, is a lot of the games I would say... Uh, you know, uh, extremely good condition. I mean, I would never say kind of mint because mint to me is brand new, never opened, fully sealed, everything like that. But you know, as close to brand new as you can get would be one of these games here like these or quite a lot of the games to be honest in the store. So if I just open this up, again, hanging tab there, box art, absolutely, incredibly good condition. Like the box inside, the cartridge, the manual, and everything is absolutely perfect so you know this is as close to buying a brand new game from the store as you can get without it being in complete mint condition so echo the tides of time is going to go up there with echo it's going to sit on there one two i will give it a go um but yeah absolutely well happy with that so next up is a series on the playstation one which kind of just i don't know it just it was it was a crazy series it kind of there was it was a defining moment i think for playstation launch it was a launch title um and i think a lot of people when they saw this game they'd seen it with f-zero um but they hadn't seen it to the same effect as what sony were doing um with the playstation one and i think it was very much down to the fact that the soundtrack was just endorsed by some of the UK's biggest DJs. Um, it was massive in the dance scene and stuff like that. If you went clubbing back in the mid 90s, 95, 96, etc., then you well may have seen this uh, game in a club because some clubs actually have PlayStations for people to play. Um, and it was just very much down to this whole kind of party atmosphere, the whole dance scene in the UK. And the game which I'm talking about, um, or the series I'm talking about, is Wipeout. Now, basically, I love Wipeout games. They are absolutely uh, one of my favorite things about the PlayStation, uh, especially when I very first got my PlayStation. I got the original Wipeout game, and I just spent hours on it. It was absolutely brilliant. Um, the soundtrack just helped so much with that. I was really into that. I used to be a DJ back in the day, uh, 96, 97. I was DJing in clubs and things. Um, and I used to just kick back and just relax on this uh, when I wasn't either doing schoolwork or DJing in clubs. So um, yeah, absolutely perfect. I've got Wipeout 1, I've got Wipeout 3, and now I've got Wipeout 2097. Granted, it is a platinum. I know some people collect platinums. Some people prefer black labels. It doesn't really bother me. I just like to have my games complete where it's possible. And if they're not, then I will go out and seek, um, you know, cover arts or manuals or whatever I need. Um, but the manual is in here. It is in really good condition, as is the disc. Um, so I'm just really happy to add that to uh, my collection. So we're going through the consoles here. We're going through the ages of the consoles. We've had a Mass System game, a couple of Mega Drive games. We've had a PlayStation 1 game, and now we have a PlayStation 2 game. Now, I absolutely love Capcom. I don't know why I just love Capcom. I don't know. It's probably because of the Street Fighter series, the Resident Evil series, things like that. Um, but any Capcom games I see, I generally buy them. Um, and actually, even if I haven't played them, I give them a go. And generally speaking, I love them. I think they're really good. I just love Capcom. I don't know why. Um, so anyway, I've been looking for this next game for a little while, and uh, it is 
Fruitful Joe. PlayStation 2, six pound games complete. But the thing is, is as I keep saying, the games are immaculate. Like I am super impressed with how clean the games are down at Doorway to Darkness. It is insane, like how well kept these games are. James even said to me that he's really picky when it comes to buying games in. He spends a lot of time sorting the games out. Um, and it really does show because this is, it's like I've just bought it brand new from the shop. It's um, it's just, it's just, it's just crazy. It's just like the manual is. There's not a mark on it. There's not a crease in it. It doesn't even look like it's been opened. And the disc, you know, there's no scratches on it whatsoever. It doesn't even look like it's been resurfaced or anything. So, you know, if you're into like really nicely presented games, you know, at good affordable prices, then Doorway to Darkness seems to be uh, one of the best places I've seen for this. So, I've been lagging behind the times when it comes to Xbox. I've always been a PlayStation man, a Sega man, a Nintendo, and a PlayStation man. I've had an Xbox like 360, I've had Xbox Ones, and I've currently got an Xbox Series X as well, which actually I'm absolutely loving. Um, but OG Xbox, I never had one. Uh, and I'm now playing catch up because with obviously with the Series X, um, you know, I've got a few Xbox games. It's backwards compatible on the majority of the games library, or there's quite a lot of games anyway. So I've now decided that I'm going to be picking up some. And the very first game, really, which I picked up uh, was Project Gotham Racer. So, you know, 99p, you know, everyone's going to have this in this in their collection. Um, you're all probably going to be going like, what? You haven't got that? I mean, we've had that for years. Do you know what I mean? Um, but, you know, Project Gotham Racing, I've never played it. I've heard good things. So I thought I'd pick that up again. It is complete as well. Um, and again, you know, super nice condition um, box and everything. And disc with the uh, manual in there. And yeah, you know, no marks on the disc again. Considering this game's like, you know, what? I don't know, 20... 18, 20, 20 years old, I don't know, something like that. I can't remember when the Xbox came out, to be honest. Um, 2002 this is, so yeah, nearly 20 years old. Uh, really, really good condition. So never played it, but I will be playing it now on my Series X. So we're down to the last two games. The next one is a Nintendo GameCube game. Um, again, like, one of the things with... with Nintendo and also with with Xbox actually um, is that I like to get like the first party or all the exclusives for those systems um, and I think I've got this game pretty much on every other Nintendo system which I own I really like it um, and it was super cheap again just a very common title um, but in my experience quite hard to find a good condition one like you know for a decent price and for six pound wave race on the GameCube I snapped this up straight away and um, because once again if we open it up I know for a fact that when I open this box in a minute it's gonna have a super super looking condition manual and the disc as well um, so yeah you know really happy with racer it's actually a really good game as well so if you haven't played wave race it's cheap and it is good fun and you obviously if you don't have a GameCube but you have a Wii with the built-in GameCube you can play it that way as well um, but yeah Wave Race, absolutely awesome. Well happy with that. So lastly, it is a PlayStation 4 game and I am into the Guilty Gear series. Now, if you don't know what the Guilty Gear series is, it is a series of beat-em-ups essentially. Um, you know, I don't know, it has quite a good cult following. You know, if people know what Guilty Gear is, then they will be into these games big time. Um, but, you know, mainstream people probably don't really know much about it. I've got quite a few Guilty Gear games across different systems, including on the Nintendo Wii. Um, but I saw this and it was five pounds and uh, I thought I'd pick this up. It's an American one uh, and it is Guilty Gear XRD Sign. Um, and basically just PlayStation 4 so I was gonna say current gen but it's no longer current gen it is the last gen um, but again you know it's it's really cool I do like my fighters um, and it is like it's a revolutionary like it's like a 2d 3d hybrid fighting game um, it's very Japanesey um, and um, yeah I mean if you haven't played uh, a Guilty Gear game then I suggest you give it a go I think you could probably get them you can get like a digital version on, on the PSN stores and things like that, relatively cheap. Um, but if you like fighting games, then give them a go. Um, but Guilty Gear 
uh, will be added to my collection. I'm really happy to have that as well. So that's it guys, that is all the pickups I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed looking around Doorway to Dorkness. I know I certainly enjoyed being there. I'm definitely gonna be there more often. And as I keep saying, if you have the means to get down to the store, then please make sure you go and check it out. Obviously with a small independent store, all the support um, goes a long, long way. And actually considering that he's only been open for a year and really had seven months of non-trading due to lockdown, um, he has done incredibly well as James, even to the point where he was telling me that he's now looking for a bigger premises because his stock just, you know, it, it basically dictates the fact that he needs more floor space. And that is only a good thing. It shows that retro gaming um, and vintage toy collecting and things like that are well and truly alive and kicking. And uh, it's really, really good to, uh, to see. So guys, listen, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for um, supporting the channel as always. If you haven't dropped a like and you've watched it all the way through to this point, then please make sure you smash the like button drop a cheeky follow on the channel. We are going to be doing a lot more of these kind of retro game hunting things. I'm also going to be doing a lot more retro videos, going through my collection, doing a games room tour and things like that. I'm going to start putting that stuff back on the channel. So listen guys, until next time, peace out. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.